Friends, welcome to this daily devotion for Thursday, November 5th, 2020. I'm Mark, one of the pastors of the United Methodist Church of New Lenox, and I welcome you into this time where we can grow closer together in love of God and love of neighbor. Here are the invocation. O God, the eternal King, who dividest the day from the darkness and turnest the shadow of death into morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep thy law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done thy will with cheerfulness, while it was still day, we may, when the night cometh, rejoice to give thee thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our theme this week is a resurrection people, and we continue with Psalm 90, verse 19. Come back to us, Lord, please, quick. Have some compassion for your servants. Fill us full every morning with your faithful love so we can rejoice and celebrate with our whole life long. Make us happy for the same amount of time that you afflicted us. May God bless the reading of the psalm today. I love this imagery. Fill us full of your faithful love. That is, that's what being a resurrection people is really all about, is being renewed daily, being restored daily, being resurrected daily into something new and growing closer into the image of Christ. Together, being full of God's love and sharing that love. I mean, being so full of that love that it's overflowing, that it's oozing out, that we can't help but share it, that we can't help but be people of light, salt of the earth, people of hope, people of encouragement, people of love. Our New Testament passage today comes from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17. Let's start in verse 22. Paul is uh, testifying on Mars Hill. Paul stood up in the middle of the council on Mars Hill and said, People of Athens, see that you are very religious in every way. As I was walking through town and carefully observing your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to an unknown God. What you worship as unknown, I now proclaim to you. May God bless the reading of the scripture today. If you have some more time, you can read that entire uh, sermon from Paul in Acts chapter 17. But Paul, Paul is such a great preacher as he, he, he goes around and observes the world that he's in, the culture that he is visiting, Athens in this case. And and he gets cues from the world around him. And and he shares those cues in ways that speak truth to people. He doesn't change his theology or his beliefs, but he offers them in new ways. And, And sometimes we need to be flexible to offer truth in new ways. For Paul, it was realizing that The Athenians worshipped all kinds of stuff. And they had altars and statues to all kinds of stuff. But he found this statue, or this uh, altar, this object of worship. It's not really defined what it is. To an unknown God. And and, and he just, he clicks with that. He says, he could have just passed it by and said, "Eh, Athenians, they worship all kinds of dumb things. But he says, an unknown God. I know something about that because I didn't know God like I thought I did. And then he came to me in Jesus Christ. And now I know him. What you worship as unknown, I now proclaim to you as known. And at the end of the day, that's, that's one of the big differences between a religious people or a Christian people or a church-going people or whatever designation we want to say and a resurrection people like you can be a, a 
a faithful person. Like you can come to church every week. Well, not right now. You can watch church every week. You can be a religious person or a spiritual person. We like to use that language. Nothing wrong. I'm not saying that, eh, that there's nothing wrong with any of that. But to know and be known. To know and be known. That's at the heart of being a resurrection people. Not to ponder about God. Oh, it's fun to ponder about God. I, I'm a theologian after all. But to be known by God and to know God like I'm known by my wife and I know her. Not fully, not completely. I mean, I don't even know myself completely. <laughs> But I'm growing in knowledge of myself. I'm growing in knowledge of my wife. I'm growing in knowledge of my children who are constantly growing themselves. And although God is full in God's understanding of God's self, and God is full in God's understanding of me, I am growing in my understanding of God. As I continue to grow in my relation, mature in my relationship. And so I offer you what Paul offers the Athenians, an opportunity to know, maybe a God that you think is unknowable. And the God that you kind of uh, imagine in your head is unknowable is probably unknowable to me, friends, because it's probably not the God I worship either. (laughs) Our reading today is from World Religions, Prayers and Thoughts from World Religions. Um, Hilda M. Orchard wrote this. Though I'm but dust, I pray. Before God standing, not asking pleasure's way, nor gold demanding, but greater things I ask from God requesting, no less than I give to me that I live, life everlasting. My heart now overflows. With prayers and praises, my heavenly Father knows each sign that raises my heart ever nearer, his heart so tender. For there's my joy and peace. In thee I found release, my soul's defender. I'm sorry, that's from O'Hallisby. There was another one. I thought this was two pages. I'll read it. Why not? This is from Hilda M. Orchard as quoted in Prayers and Thoughts from World Religions. Take me aside, O God, and let me be a little while within thy company. And speak to me, although no word is spoken, and still the silence closes round, unbroken. And lead me for my spiritual discerning, further along thy lonely road of learning. And let me hold Communion, thou and I, with minds outreaching and the world put by. May God bless these beautiful poems today. I don't think I did either of them particularly well justice, but uh, I hope there was something in there that maybe spoke to you today. I uh, have read a lot of poetry this week. I like um, I like poetry. I know not everybody does, uh, but I think there are times and places where it can speak art and poetry, whatever they are. There, there might be one or two that you have an affinity for, but they often say art is the uh, window of the divine, right? The, the Maybe the window of the inner self, but it, it's kind of a, a window to things beyond ourselves. We might not be able to put into words everything. And the resurrection is something that, although we have some definition of what it is, We don't really know what it is until he comes again. We know what it was for him, kind of. We know what it is for us, kind of. But we don't know the whole picture. Even in knowing God, I don't fully know God. I don't fully know myself. As I said earlier, I don't fully know my wife. I don't fully know my kids or who they will become. I will enjoy each moment as I learn that. And so whether it's music, poetry, writing, 
art, sculpture, dance. There's other media that I've left out. There are ways to use words, ways to use images, ways to use sound that might just help us learn a little bit more about who God is and who we are. Friends, as we pray today, we pray for all those who are struggling. And there are many, many in our world, many in our lives. Uh, today, I, I'm not with you. I'm, I'm actually um, on vacation vacation <laughs> this week because uh, today my daughter is having a fairly significant surgery. She's having hip surgery. Um, and, and it's so tough. You know, it's, it's tough as a parent to have to watch your children uh, go through that kind of stuff. You wouldn't hope that any young person would have to have hip surgery, of course. But so often we've, you know, we, we just have a desire. I have a desire um, that my children wouldn't suffer. And yet they go, they'll go through suffering. I have a desire that you wouldn't go through suffering, and yet you might go through suffering. You probably will. I mean, it's just our condition. <laughs> we bring it upon ourselves sometime even. But it's not what God wants for us forever, even when we bring it upon ourselves. And so we need to comfort those who are suffering, pray for them, be with them, Offer them healing. Offer them hope. Offer them life. So let's do that today. Lord, I ask that you be with all of those who are struggling. Maybe there are those listening to this now who are dealing with various issues in their lives. We're all dealing with this pandemic. Often as individuals are listening to this today, my daughter will be in surgery. We all have these realities in our lives. Comfort us. Comfort us. Bring us back to your peace. Remind us of your hope. Give us faith that we may share that hope with others. We pray this in your holy name. And if you'd like, you can join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the glory, and the power, excuse me, and the glory, forever. Amen. Friends, until tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll probably get the Lord's Prayer right, maybe. <laughs> Hear the benediction. May grace, mercy, love, and peace flow through your life and ministry all day long. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.